a pleasure to be here, as Anima said, after a long pause on everything. And um, I'm excited to talk about the importance of real-world challenges for building artificial general intelligence. Our world is full of fundamental challenges, and whose solutions, the solutions to those challenges, can make huge impact on everyone on the world. At DeepMind, our goal is to build intelligence, solve intelligence, to benefit humanity, and to advance science. And while doing that, we look at a lot of research problems, a lot of simulations, but at the same time, we try to tackle many of those scientific and engineering challenges too. And in doing that, our goal is to, our goal is to create more and more general methods and algorithms, methods that can solve multiple of these problems at a given time. And at the same time, we want to verify that the path that we are taking to solve AGI is actually one that is meaningfully and positively impactful on the world. Now, when we think about AGI research, we mostly think about two main domains, a world environment and an agent that is acting in that environment. And this kind of thinking leads to two main classes of algorithms, prediction models that are in the world environment that can learn that environment, and then can produce future predictions in that environment, and control algorithms that go inside the agents and enable those agents to make intelligent actions in that environment. Now, a successful path to developing AGI has to have solutions and understanding for the problems in both of these domains. For example, AlphaFold is a great achievement to be able to predict the 3D structures of proteins is already bringing a huge leap forward in biology. And we hope that it will help understand diseases better and potentially lead to better drug discoveries. On the control side, we have developed agents which learn to play challenging games like Go by themselves. And also we have worked on industrial control systems. Today, I'll, go, I'll give two examples of new research areas that we have worked on, one from each side of these domains. First, a collaboration that we have done with the UK Met Office, which provides meteorological forecasting, but at the same time, it is a leading research institute in climate science. Together, we have looked at the problem of now casting. It is the capability of being able to predict the rainfall in the next five minutes to two hours. This is a critical ability because it impacts decision-making in important areas such as emergency services, energy management, flood warning systems. And weather prediction is a very challenging problem. It is almost impossible to precisely model with classical techniques. At the same time, it is a domain where there is a lot of data available. And with the current AI methods that we are developing, we can leverage that data, we can learn from that data, and then we can use those models to make future predictions. The models that we have developed for this particular work has actually been researched using research data sets to generate images and videos. And it is a great example that we see these models transferring from these research domains into something so critical into an application like predicting accurate weather patterns. Here you see the comparison between the patterns generated from our model and the ground truth. To be able to create such accurate predictions, the model relies on two main components, a spatial and a temporal component, working together to produce these patterns. What is important is this model is trained only from data in an end-to-end -end manner. And once it is trained, taking 20 minutes of weather data, it can produce predictions up to two hours into the future. In our AGI research, these prediction models are in the environment space, and the predictions, the future forecast produced from this model is then used by the agent, in this case, real humans, expert forecasters, who actually get help from the predictions of these models to make better decisions, better forecasts. I think this is a great example how AI models can actually be useful in the context of human decision-making. It is also an example where I hope that this model is actually contributing 
to the understanding of our climate. The second example that I wanted to talk about on the control side is a collaboration that we had with EPFL, leading research university here in Switzerland. With their experimental fusion reactor, we looked at the problem of plasma control. Fusion is one of the root node solutions to probably the biggest problem in the world. And in itself, it contains multiple significant challenges. And plasma control is one of them, which we have focused. It is a domain where we do not have a lot of experimental data. But physicists over the years have created very accurate simulators. And using those simulators, we can train agents, we can train control systems that learn by interacting with that simulator. And only through that interaction with the simulator, we can train very accurate control systems. And then, with zero-shot transfer into the real fusion reactor, they can successfully control the plasma. The algorithms that is developed in this case were actually first developed in our robotics research domain. And then it is great to see again that these algorithms actually can be transferred to a challenging application like plasma control in fusion reactors. Here you see the inside view of the tokamak reactor. And on the right, you see the reconstruction of the plasma. You can see that the AI policy can precisely control the shape and location of the plasma. And it learns to do this only by following the blue dots that you see. It is very important to be able to do that, because the plasma inside the reactor is actually even hotter than the sun. So to be able to control its shape and location so that it doesn't touch the boundaries, the walls, and has an efficient structure is a critical problem. The system learns to do that by using around 100 input measurements from the reactor and outputs control signals for magnets. And it has to repeat that 10,000 times a second on such a high frequency. Moreover, it is not able to do that only for that particular configuration. It is actually a general system that can do many different configurations. And it is important to be able to generalize to these many configurations because these different structures help the fusion researchers understand their problem better. We hope that with the capability that AI brings to do easily doing plasma control, the researchers in fusion can actually come up with new ways to think about their problem and better progress in their research. In both of these examples that we have looked at, we have collaborated with experts in their domains. And they were excellent collaborations, and a huge thanks and credit goes to those teams. I believe that AGI is one of the most important things that we can work on as scientists. And while doing that, obviously we have a lot of challenges in our own domain in terms of learning to transfer, learning efficiently, understanding causality, and understanding time. But we will continue to apply our methods to these real-world challenges so that we can get to more and more general algorithms and make sure that we are making positive impact. Just like AlphaFold, weather prediction, and plasma control, there are many other scientific and engineering challenges in the world. And researchers from all different fields can come together to work on these to accelerate our progress for the solution of these problems. And science is the common language that we can use to improve our collaborations, to enable those collaborations between different fields and different researchers. I am personally very excited to see what our AGI research is going to contribute next in many of these problems. Thank you very much. <laughs>